Good evening, Jules fans. Welcome back to the latest episode of Jules in the Blood TV. It's Thursday evening, which means a look back at the week that was and then looking ahead to Saturday's Skybet League One fixture, which sees us take on Oxford United at the Kassam Stadium. Slightly later kickoff time this weekend. That'll be 5.30. Uh, the game's been put back, as have all league uh, games in our division and all sport across the country um, because of the funeral of His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. Uh, so a slightly later start for the Jills. Um, no game this week to look back on. Tuesday night, we've had a free week after last Saturday's goalless draw at home to Shrewsbury. Um, obviously, there were a lot of games in the division, some key results that stood out. Um, potentially around players, um, sorry, teams that are in and around us in the table. Oxford United, our opponents this coming weekend, saw off Shrewsbury by four goals to one to take their tally to 10 in the last two fixtures, which is great uh, just before we play them. Uh, Doncaster Rovers slide continued. They lost 3 0 at home. And Lincoln, who had been on the slide as well, good point at Blackpool last weekend. They absolutely slapped MK Dons by four goals to nil as well. So they look like they're back on the horse and back on the playoff trail. All in all, it means that there's pretty much no margin for error now for the Jules in terms of trying to get into the top six before the end of the season. Only one point from the last two games, only five left for us. So it's going to be a tall order. We're probably going to have to go to Oxford and or Peterborough and pick up positive results and win at least one of them. Um, so let's crack right on with the preview. This Saturday, like I say, it's a slightly late kickoff. We travel to take on these at the Sam Stadium. I think it's fair to say that Carl Robinson's Yellows have had a bit of a topsy-turvy season. Didn't start the campaign in great form. We saw them off pretty comfortably in the reverse fixture back in September at the Priestfield Stadium. They then picked up middle part of the campaign, went on an extraordinary run. It was eight or nine consecutive wins in Skybet League One that saw them push into the top half and towards the top six. Um, the form since then has been a bit in and out. Some good performances, some frustrating results if you're a, a member of the Oxford faithful. But, but all in all... They're back up the top end of the table and competing to try and get in the playoffs with five games to go like ourselves. And we know it's going to be a tough game. But what I'm going to do now is leave you in the capable hands of Oxford fan Joe. He's going to give you the lowdown on everything we need to know about Saturday's opponents. You can find him on Twitter at Joe underscore Citrone. I think I pronounced that correctly. That's C-I-T-R-O-N-E. So go and check him out and give him a follow if you're not already. But here he is now with everything you need to know about Oxford. Hi everyone, Joe Citroni here, social media assistant at Star Sports Bookmakers and Oxford United supporter. I've been asked by Jules and the Blood TV to give a really quick overview of Oxford United ahead, of course, with our clash against Gillingham on Saturday at the Cassam Stadium. Firstly, I'd just like to apologise for not being able to quite secure the uh, post-lockdown haircut prior to recording this video. I'm just hoping that this beautiful orange Oxford United away kit will somewhat make up for it. Um, but anyway, on to the overview... Um, it's been a really weird season for Oxford, really topsy-turvy, a really bad start. was recovered um, over Christmas by an incredible run of nine consecutive wins, which dragged us away from um, sort of the bottom of the table towards playoff contention. We've somewhat plateaued since then, a little bit of inconsistency kicking in, injuries certainly haven't helped our cause, and it's taken a, took a little bit of time to integrate the new loan signings into the team. But... We have dragged ourselves um, back uh, to only a few points outside the top six after two really impressive uh, performances in the last seven days against Crewe and Shrewsbury. Ten goals, ten uh, separate goal scorers. Um, it's been quite the uh, quite the week for Oxford. Um, as for key players, as I say, like with ten ten different goal scorers in the last two games. Difficult to narrow it down, but I suppose our main goal threat, of course, has to be uh, our number nine, Matty Taylor. 15 or 16 goals this season. Our leading scorer, a real born finisher who comes alive inside the penalty box, but has really improved his hold-up play um, and his play outside the box as well this season. Often drifting out wide and dropping deep, picking up the ball and, uh, and offering that creative outlet as well. Um, the midfield has been a bit of a conundrum for Carl Robertson this season. Uh, lots of chopping and changing. Uh, the injury to Marcus McGuane didn't help that at all. But we seem to have struck upon a formula over the last couple of games that's you know, it's really been working. Cameron Brown again in that number six role as that sort of deep-lying uh, midfield uh, playmaker. 
two advanced dates ahead of him in uh, the Irishman, Mark Sykes, and James Henry, who since coming back from injury at the start of the month, has really started to recapture some of his best form. He's been he's been looking really, really sharp. Defensively as well, our two fullbacks have recently come back to full fitness. Sam Long and Josh Ruffle is really important to the way that we play. We like to push the fullbacks really nice and high to offer that extra uh, attacking outlet at the top of the pitch, as, of course, as well as, uh, as as well as defensively. Sam Long has come on leaps and bounds this season and probably been you know, one of the strong contenders for player of the season. And Josh Ruffles has just been as consistent and steady and uh, reliable as ever at left back. And Elliot Moore and Rob Atkinson, despite a slightly shaky start to the campaign, have started to form a really strong partnership in the heart of defence as well. As for what I know about Gillingham, uh, of course, there's a, a few ex Oxford players in that team, few players we know really, really well, Alex McDonald of course, was a really key cog to our 2015-16 promotion season. Um, and, of course, Jordan Graham was on loan during that season briefly as well and came back a couple of years later under Carl Robinson, a player that we know all about. And, of course, caused us a few problems at Priestfield earlier in the season. Um, you know, Steve Evans is, of course, a manager that I'm sure you have heard a lot about um, other fans' experiences with him with over the years and how many... Um, ding dongs um, clubs have had with him and Oxford are no different. Uh, we've played him many times over the years when he was manager of Crawley and Rotherham and Peterborough and of course now Gillingham. I'm not sure if I'm too many Oxford fans with good things to say about him, but he seems to have done a really good job at Gillingham. To be fair to him. Um, as for uh, a score prediction, it's difficult not to be positive after the last two games. Um, as as I mentioned, Oxford have a tendency to be slightly streaky and slightly inconsistent. So you never know quite which uh, version of Oxford is going to turn up, but you would imagine if it's the version that's turned up in the last two games, it'll be difficult for any team in this league to contain us. You know, 10 goals, 10 different goal scorers, and actually we look quite um, solid at the back as well. But of course, not that long ago that we put in a real shocker of a performance against Accrington um, and lost 2-1 at home, so you never quite know. Um, the positive for Jills will be that Brandon Barker, who's been a real, really impressive loan signing, uh, came in in January from Rangers, is likely to miss out through injury, picked up a knock at, um, and was forced off on Tuesday. Mide Shadipo will likely to be the man to come in, um, but hopefully Elliot Lee will continue to thrive on the other side. He has recently come back from injury, uh, a loan signing in January from Luton. And has looked really, really lively and uh, and was really impressive in particular in the last game. Um, so prediction. Um, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be too outlandish. I'll say two one Oxford. Hopefully we'll be able to continue our scoring form. Hopefully Matty Taylor will be able to get back on the score sheet and continue his scoring run as well. Um, and hopefully we'll be picking up three points. As, as I'm sure you know, in the business end of the season, it's really now make or break for Oxford. Enough you. you you do feel it's make or break for Gillingham as well. So it could be well be tight and cagey, but I'm hopeful Oxford will come out on top. Anyway, all the best to Gillingham for the rest of the season. Um, after Saturday, of course, though. <laughs> See you guys. Some excellent stuff in there. Thank you, pal. That certainly gives us the lowdown and everything we need to know ahead of Saturday's 5.30pm kickoff. So thank you very much. Um, Key players, like I think Joe's already mentioned, we know James Henry's very good at this level. If you give him time and space on the ball, he'll create chances, he'll score goals. Matty Taylor absolutely flying this season. He's got uh, 15 in League One. He's comfortably their top scorer. Uh, Shadipo, the youngster as well, he's got nine in the league, so a decent season for him. Elliot Lee, who uh, Joe mentioned, going to be coming up against his brother potentially at the weekend, isn't he? Ollie plays for us. And uh, he's got four in ten starts since arriving on loan from Luton Town in the in the January transfer window, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough game. They've got plenty of attacking threats, uh, but let's have a look at the comparative form of the two sides. So last six games, Oxford have got uh, a, a loss, a win, two more losses, and then two more wins. So very in and out, like we've already mentioned. Uh, so that's nine points from the last eighteen over the last half a dozen. Jules. Exactly the same amount of points as well. We've got two wins, three draws and a solitary defeat in them half a dozen games. So it still totals the same amount. At home on their own patch, Oxford, a draw, a win and a loss. And then a win, a loss and a win. So that's 10 points from the last 18 available. Jill's a pair of wins, pair of defeats and a pair of uh, draws. So that's eight points on the road over the last six. Looking at the... Um, 
comparative form a bit further. Barely any draws recently for Oxford. Too many draws for Jules as we've tried to gate crash the top six. I've said a few times that the last three we've just looked a little bit fatigued. Put a lot of effort into getting in ourselves in and around the top six and give ourselves a chance. And maybe it's just starting to catch up with this small squad that we have been running with. But we do benefit from a full week off. So fingers crossed the boys have been able to get on the training ground and, and implement some plans ahead of the game. Team news for us. Um, nothing untowards come out of the game against Rosebery and there's nothing been mentioned in the press conference on social media today by Steve Evans. So it looks like it's just Callum Slattery unavailable. He's still at Southampton recovering from that ankle problem that he picked up in January. So my team for the weekend's fixture, I would make um, a couple of changes, change the shape slightly. I'd go with Jack Bonham in goal, a back four of Ryan Jackson, Jack Tucker, Robbie Cundy and Connor Ogilvy. I would then put Carl Dempsey next to Stuart O'Keefe in the middle of midfield. Three in front of them for me would be Jordan Graham, Oliver Lee and Alex McDonald. And I would have Dane Oliver as the lone front man. I don't think we can be that open and go 4-4-2 away from home against a side that scored 10 in their last 180 minutes of football. But at the same time, we do really need to win. Substitutes for me, Sasha Bastien, Tommy O'Connor, Robbie McKenzie, Matty Willock, Tyreek Johnson, Dominic Samuel and John Akindi. Um, big question, score prediction before I let you all go. Um, no rhyme or reason to this we've looked a bit leggy the last couple of games we've only picked up a point uh, from the last two available after that defeat at Blackpool and the goalless draw last week in Kent um, Oxford have scored 10 in two games conceding only one 10 separate scorers um, according to Joe so that's a bit of a weird stat you'd have thought that someone would have uh, doubled up in that period but that's not to be but I'm going to back us to react. I'm going to back us to keep the season going a little bit longer. And I'm going against everything that I've seen Jules at Oxford in recent years. And I'm going to go for a final score. Might need me head wobbling. Oxford United 1, Gillingham 2. And I'm going to back for Dane Oliver and Carl Dempsey to be our goal scorers as we pick up a vital win and keep the playoff push alive. Um, right, that is enough from me this evening. Um, Thanks as always for watching, listening. Please continue to like and subscribe. If this is your first time watching the channel, don't forget to press that button. Subscribe to the channel. Click the bell so you get notifications of every time I upload. Uh, please continue to check out the third tier podcast. We'll be back Monday for that as well with another show, another look back at some uh, weekend fixtures. And... Uh, Continue to download the Fan Hub app. I hear a rumour about that they might be letting all fans in without a waiting list. So it's imperative that you go and download that from the App Store and uh, and get yourself sorted out quickly. It's a brilliant app. You can win prizes, earn points, become manager, that type of thing. It's all very self-explanatory and user-friendly. So go and download that. Um, right. That is enough from me this evening. Uh, I'll be back on Saturday for the match day live at the slightly later time of 5.30. Until then, it's Friday tomorrow. Enjoy your weekend up until Saturday. Fingers crossed the Jules can make it a good one by picking up a positive result. And until next time, up the Jules.